Hi everybody, my name is Steph Sonyadi and welcome to my home. If this is the first time you're seeing me, I've been doing YouTube full time for about five years and I recently took a three month break. I always used to say I was taking a break and then I disappear for maybe a week or two and then come back and absolutely nothing would have changed, but this time I disappeared for a straight up three months. So, Hi, I'm back. I wanted to do a little get ready with me, something casual, something simple, while I walk you through, if you're a viewer that's been with me for a while, why I left and what I've been up to. And if you're a new viewer, well, hi, you can stay too. So I'm just gonna do my makeup and walk you through it kind of loosely. I'm not gonna go into detail, it's not a tutorial, but I'm gonna chat with you as I get ready about what's happening because a lot has changed since I left and I'm really, really happy and excited to share that with you. So let's just jump in. Babes. First of all, my neighbor has been beating on his walls all day. I don't know what the fuck's going on over there, but if you hear anything wild, unintelligible, and odd, it's not me, okay? I'm gonna start off with the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. Always gotta prime, babes, always. My skin's feeling like irritated and irritable today. It's feeling a little bit spicy. I find this one is a nice gentle thing that helps calm it down. Maybe that's placebo. Either way, I love it. While I deliberate what foundation to use, let's chat. I have been gone taking care of myself. Where do I start? I think what happens with YouTube is you get so caught up in the frenzy of staying relevant that you forget what being a person is. At least I did. And I mean, of course there's ways to go about this in a totally healthy way. And there's ways to go about it in, you know, a nice planned, structured way. But the way I was going about it was a very grassroots, childlike way. I started doing this when I was like 12 years old and I just never really changed the way I was doing things. I always made it very personal and very gut punching for myself. <laughs> I've kind of realized that's not sustainable. Let's do some concealer. I don't like doing like a full face of foundation anymore. Or at least not all the time. Sometimes I do like if I'm going out or something, but right now I'm just gonna use concealers and work from there. So this is a Charlotte Tilbury Magic Wand, I think. Magic Away Liquid Concealer in the shade mm, 7 Medium. Wow. Basically, three months ago, I started a program for eating disorder treatment. And that was, without a doubt, the absolute best thing I've ever done for myself in my life. Hands down. I feel like I was going through life in a way where I couldn't stop, I just had to keep going. And I felt like if I stopped or if I did not have control over my immediate anything, that I would die. Like, I felt like it was not, that wasn't an option to stop. Because with social media, you have to stay relevant, you have to stay popping, you have to do things all the time. And that left absolutely no time for contemplation, even though I thought, oh, like I make my own hours, you know, I can do whatever I want. That leaves a lot of time to think about myself and my circumstances. No, what it does is never give you time to think about yourself and your circumstances because you're always working. And I also thought, oh, you know, because my work is about me, I'm kind of doing self-discovery and contemplation as I work. And no, no, no. What was happening was I was directing my life in a way that other people wanted me to, to get views, to get attention, to get relevance. And that was a great disservice to myself and to everybody in my life. So anyway, went to this eating disorder program. It I started it in, I think, May, end of May, and I completed it in early July. And then I continued to take time to kind of figure out exactly what I wanted to do. I started planning with like a producer and trying to build up this whole thing. And I tried that. We filmed for a day and I realized that doesn't feel right either. I'm using my Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter, the Hollywood Flawless, y'all, this stuff, so good. My eyes are getting wet right now thinking about it. I'm just gonna apply it directly onto my skin like a Neanderthal. I'm not a professional makeup artist anymore and nobody else is using this product. So I feel no shame or guilt in putting this directly on my skin. This isn't really a primer or a foundation. It's kind of in the middle. And then I'm actually gonna mix that with this. This thing I got sent in a PR package. I actually have never used this brand before. I believe it's Niod or Neod. I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm so sorry. But it's called the Photography Fluid with an opacity of 12% highlighting system. You can mix this with foundation or use it by itself. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of put it on my face like so. And when I blend, it'll kind of get mixed in. This stuff I have tried a lot on my own and y'all it changes the game when it comes to video or like even just instagram photos it is incredible there's a ghost there's a ghost in my apartment i really like like glowy healthy skin anymore you know what oh my god there's so many things that have changed 
through eating disorder treatment that aren't even like, you know, big concept. Things that are small, things that are like, that people take for granted. Things like, I don't know, skin being radiant. Things like having energy. Things like being emotionally available for the people you care about. Not even about being able to form a new relationship kind of emotionally available but just like having the willpower to comfort somebody or to listen to somebody's problems quite frankly i didn't even know i was sick when i went into treatment i thought that i was all better and i just had some bad habits and i remember like when i was in treatment and i'm not going to go super into detail about this if you want a video all about the treatment specifically with what i'm willing to share you can ask for that now i'll think about it but i also don't want to i don't want to make that like the central focus moving forward either so but if you're interested you know i'll see what i can do i remember early on in treatment my phone's ringing oh 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 hmm. hello hi no what oh you fucker okay well um do you need something okay well well is this a fucking joke? <laughs> thing that's really cute. Um, well, I really appreciate that and that's super sweet, but also I have to record this video and I'm feeling really good about it, so I, I wanna try to focus. And then I can be, uh, no, it's okay. You can call me anytime. Oh, what was I saying? In treatment, early on, meeting with like, we had something called a navigator, which is kind of like somebody that guided us through the program and like checked in with us like a therapist. Also the concealer I'm using is Makeup Forever HD concealer in 34. I remember saying to the navigator, like, I don't know if I belong here. I feel like I don't fit in and I feel like I'm not sick enough to be here. And she was like, you belong here, <laughs> trust me. And I was like, ah, I'm not sure how to take that. You because I want to be here. I really wanted to get better. I never wanted anything more. Within a week there, I had like a straight up mental breakdown in front of everybody. And that was a long time coming. Cause girl, that shit was pent up. Holy crap. We were in a group called Body Image and everybody, like I wasn't even talking. I was just listening cause it was my first time in that group. Everybody was like just talking about their own experiences and the way that they would, you know, look at themselves or think about themselves and you know, their unhealthy patterns that they're noticing and things like that, their goals. And I was just sitting there and eventually like I couldn't talk and I went into a full blown panic attack, which hasn't happened since I was 12, which is also the same time my eating disorder symptoms started. So you can imagine like the full circle moment, like a week into treatment and eating properly, I'm able to access emotions I haven't felt in over a decade. Very effective. There's a saying that something like, something to do with like the birth of a star, how it collapses and then explodes into a supernova or something. I don't know exactly what the quote is, but it's something like, you know, this is not your destruction, this is your rebirth etc etc it was very much like that 100 i was worn down to the most basic form of myself where i didn't have my success i didn't have my viewers i didn't have my videos i didn't have my instagram followers that environment was just me nothing else and i realized very quickly i didn't have anything in my life except for work so if my work wasn't going well i felt useless and i felt like nothing and you know what <laughs> that's not sustainable <laughs> so I realized quickly I had a very unhealthy relationship with not only myself, but my work. Also, the powder I'm using right now on the butt end of this no-name beauty blender is the Laura Mercier setting powder in matte. It's not the glowy one. I have both. Anyway, it was just, I mean, it was me and all these other people that were in treatment and... Guys. <laughs> Guys. I don't know what that accent was, but let me tell you. I had forgotten what it was like to form a relationship with a person. And this is gonna sound melodramatic, and I wanna be clear that I'm not saying, oh, what was me? You know, this isn't about me feeling bad or asking for pity. This is just me trying to express where I was and how I was thinking. Being on YouTube since I was a kid is one thing, but also my entire life, I've been a spectacle. Growing up in a small town where I looked different and I was different from everybody else because either I was trans or because I had Wardenburg syndrome, I didn't have a choice to be looked at or not. I didn't get to blend in. I didn't get to be normal. And so I learned very quickly the only thing I could be was a spectacle. Therefore, YouTube as a career was such an easy fit for me. And it felt very natural to me to talk to a camera, to constantly be asked questions, to never be left alone. And I didn't realize until very recently in my life that that is a pattern I've established in my life, that I don't get to be left alone. I don't get that luxury. And I did that to myself. And that was 
a revelation. And I don't know why I'm saying this. I guess, like, bottom line is, I like this job. I like YouTube, I love you guys, but also I've realized now that I am more than that. There was a video I released when I was on that road trip recently. If you guys have watched me for a while, you might know what I'm talking about. A lot of you left <laughs> when I did that. And you know what, quite frankly, I don't blame you. That was a train wreck, okay? That was the last straw for me before I had to get treatment because girl, that was a, that was a, that was just, a train wreck. I'm glad I did it. It was a cool experience. You know, that's something I can tell people for the rest of my life that I did, but holy crap, that was a train wreck. There was a moment when I was on that trip and I was vlogging in the desert in the middle of nowhere. Literally, there was probably like hella cobras and scorpions crawling around me. I didn't know. And um, oh, by the way, I'm using Laura Mercier setting powder in the glow version now. Um, everywhere except for my under eyes. I was in that desert and I was like, I'm so thankful for you guys because without you, I have nothing. And I didn't understand that I wasn't, that was wrong. I didn't know that I had anything else. Something we did in treatment is we made a pie chart of all of the things that give us self-worth and value. And mine was about 50% my appearance. And that's like weight, shape, looks and 50% my work and I was like that's me that's who I am and girl that is so sad and even just thinking about that right now makes me kind of emotional because I didn't I had no idea that I had anything else and um I did bronzer time hi I'm using this is Fenty Beauty Sunstalker bronzer in Private Island my favorite guys this bronzer first of all Fenty packaging second of all Fenty Rihanna in general Y'all. I had taken for granted for my entire adult life everything that wasn't my appearance and wasn't YouTube. And I don't know how I got so wrapped up in that mess. I don't know what the exact root was. You know what, at this point, it doesn't matter because it's in the past. And girl, I'm in the present, okay? For once in my life. So now my Venn diagram, not my, it's not a Venn diagram, it's a pie chart. Every circle on a paper is the same, girl. Mm -hmm. It has things like my family, and my friends, and my relationships, and my imagination, and painting. Guys, when I was in high school, I was a painter. And that was my whole thing, was I was a visual arts student. That was my whole shtick, was I love doing art. And my whole thing was like from a young age, I was like an art prodigy and I would draw like things and concepts that kids didn't normally understand, like hair having gravity at the age of like two, like very simple things. I'm not saying I was freaking Picasso or whatever, but I was talented and I still am, okay? And I don't feel any guilt or any shame in complimenting myself anymore like that. Anyway, I was an art student growing up and that's how I got into makeup because I was always drawing eyes and faces. And you know, when I was 12 or 13 and I started having transgender feelings and I didn't know what those were or how to express those, I started doing my makeup as like an avenue to express and explore. And then from there I learned, you know, basically how to do it pretty well. So I went into that as a career and I was a makeup artist, but I kind of just ditched painting because I was like, oh, I'm better at makeup than I am at painting. Therefore I shouldn't do painting and I should only do makeup because I should full on, full hog, only do my job all the time and never make time for anything else. And I should only ever work. <laughs> and if I'm not making money from it, I shouldn't do it. That is a horrible mindset. That is only gonna leave you feeling empty and sad when your work isn't there or stops being on an uptick. Oh, by the way, that was, um, <laughs> NARS Orgasm Blush. I'm really surprised my neighbor isn't like doing anything fucking insane right now because uh, he was really going at it all day. And I was like, I can't wait for you. I gotta record now. Gotta record, it's been literally four months. Okay, let me record now. Anyway, I ditched painting when I got into makeup and I went to college and all that shit. I, I ditched a lot of things that made me happy when I found new things. I was like, oh, I can only really have one thing at a time. No, I can have a lot of things at a time. Painting's really important to me. And I picked it back up when I was in treatment and I wasn't working and I was just really confused about who I was. And I think somebody said like, what is it that you want to do? What is it that you want to do right now? And I wanted to paint. So I went out and I bought a canvas. I bought actually like a little pack of small canvases and like a basic acrylic set and some brushes. And I started painting. And the first time I painted, I did it with a friend because I was insecure. And I have this thing where I feel like everybody's watching me all the time and judging me, even if I'm by myself in my apartment, which is definitely a YouTube thing. So I felt like I needed a friend with me to attempt it for the first time in years. Otherwise I would have to take it too seriously, you know? 
and I couldn't do that. So I had my friend Sam over and we painted together for the first time and girl, I was so happy. And everybody in my life that sees me talking about painting knows, like they can see the joy it brings me. And I don't think I've had something like that in so long. And I'm just so happy that I have something that makes me feel so much happiness from the inside out so effortlessly. Did the highlighter trick down the nose, friends. The highlighter I'm using is the Charlotte Tilbury Bar of Gold Palette. This is basically almost a full face of Charlotte Tilbury so far. That's gonna change, don't worry. And then let's zoom in for some eye makeup. Let's zoom in for that magic. Oof. Anyway, going back like 10 minutes ago, what else is on my pie chart? Let me think. I actually discovered that my work is a very small piece of that pie. Where it used to be 50% appearance and 50% work, it's now maybe like, maybe 5% appearance and maybe 15% work. There's so many other things on that pie chart. And I'm actually really excited to like explore and fill it out with more things. I don't know, I'm not perfect and I'm not a psychologist. All I know is I'm really glad that there's more in my life now than my work and my body because that was horrible. Through painting, I started playing with makeup again because that's like the natural progression of me, right? Paint and then like, oh, painting's fun, let me try makeup. <laughs> so I went out and I, I used to have like, it used to be that this bag was all the makeup I had anymore and now I've got a lot more than that. <laughs> Oops. But I'm glad, I'm really glad because it makes me happy too. So what should we do for our eyes today? Let me think. Let's play with this Natasha Denona Gold Palette today. I love this thing. This thing is stunning. This is the most expensive eyeshadow palette I've ever owned, but girl, it is so pretty. Look at these colors. Gold is my favorite color. All right, I'm gonna start with the shade Aria all over the lid. We're gonna do something real simple today. This isn't a tutorial. This isn't like a review. This is just a girl woman. Do you all like your girl womans? Because I'm going to do lots of them. I like them. They're fun. Let me know, though, for real, if you like the Get Ready With Me format or how else you'd like me to explore beauty on this channel moving forward, because that's something I want to keep doing. On the topic of beauty, let's discuss something really important and something that I really, truly internalized through my treatment. Cosmetics and makeup are fun. They're great. You know, wonderful to express yourself or to you know craft an image that makes you feel powerful or whatever it may be but what's really important to remember is that makeup is just cosmetics and beauty is everything else i am a very adamant believer in the truth that beauty is subjective and there is no one way to be beautiful. If I believed that, I would be unhappy for my entire life because I am not pretending that I am not conventionally attractive in certain ways, but I am not your standard look or person and I never have been and I don't think I can be because of Wardenburg syndrome or because I'm trans or because of a number of things. I'm really internalizing the fact that, you know, makeup is cosmetics and looks are one thing, but beauty that can allure and beauty that can enchant and enthrall men um, is something else entirely. And you know what? It's pretty much independent of hitting a standard of femininity. Pretty much independent. I'm going into the shade Sandstone, which is like a lighter, softer brown, just so I can blend this up. Makeup is cosmetics, beauty is the rest. And that's that on that. All right, <laughs> thank you. We love a good smoke. Let's smoke it out. Let's smoke it. Smoke it, babe. Babe, babe, just smoke it. Babe, babe, smoke it out, babe. <laughs> babe, we love a smoke. Smoke it out, babe. Babe, babe, you should smoke it. Babe, 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 guess what? <laughs> you should smoke it, babe. Babe, smoke it, babe. Next, <laughs> I'm gonna go back to that Anastasia Beverly. This is not Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is Charlotte Tilbury. Suck a dick. I'm gonna go back to that Charlotte Tilbury powder I use under my eyes, and I'm gonna use that to soften up the crease, I'm gonna blend down from the brow bone. Babe, smoke it out. I know I've been on like 20 different rants and rumbles, but here's the real tea. Right now, fresh, steaming, steaming for you. Mm -hmm. I have never in my life allowed myself to so completely fall apart, which is the exact reason why I feel so not falling apart. Does that make any sense to anybody? Please say yes. The last shadow I'm gonna use is from that same palette. This is Lime Chrome in the corner here. This one looks a lot like the new Jackie Aina um, ABH, one of their shades, and I think it is stunning. It's like a green gold with like pink in it. I, it's unbelievable. And just for the record, like I haven't been keeping up on the beauty industry for a long time. So there may be things that I say that are like, duh, bitch, we've been new, duh. 
But you know what? I haven't been watching this shit for a long time, so give me a break and let me rediscover and appreciate beauty as if it's never been explored before. Can you imagine a fresh perspective? Because I can't. Just real soft, that, just real soft, that right in the front there, just real soft. Nothing crazy, you know. Let's take a break from our eyes to do our brows, bitch. I've been using an Urban Decay brow pencil. This is the shade Dark Drapes, which quite frankly, actually, I guess your drapes is your hair and the curtain is the genital hair. So I feel a bit less violated now. We're fine. I like this pencil because it has a really fine tip, which means you don't get those like chunky chunky brows you get some natural shit happening so something else that i want to talk about real quick is like i think i said earlier you know i was too personal or something along those lines i said something like that and let me just clarify something i don't regret a single thing i did on youtube i don't have a single regret because i don't believe in regrets i feel like regrets are a waste of time i can't take anything back and even if even if I deleted some of the videos that I made where I'm just like, ooh, ooh, girl, the consequences of this. <laughs> Even if I deleted it, this is the internet. Somebody's still gonna have it. So I'd rather just own my past and move forward into the future with a more sustainable approach. I'm still gonna talk about things that are personal to me. I'm just gonna do it in a way that's healthier for me. So you don't have to worry. I'm not gonna turn into a soulless monster. In fact, if anything, I was a soulless monster before I left. So, <laughs> hi, I have a soul now. Everything's all human again, it's really fun. I'm gonna do some liner. This is the Urban Decay 24-7 Waterline Eye Pencil in Legend. It's just like a black eye pencil made for your waterline. It's real getting stumpy, and guess what I don't have? An eyeliner pencil sharpener? Um, I'm just gonna do my tight line now, so we're Gucci. And now I'm gonna do some, um, just like a nice thin winged liner with my Stila Stay All Day Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner Pen. This is the fine tip one, which I actually love because I have a habit of um, accidentally making the lines too thick and then suddenly all you can see is eyeliner and not eyeshadow. And this fine tipped one makes it really easy to not make that mistake. Okay, so it's a little bit chunkier than I intended, but still much less chunky than if I would have used a regular eyeliner pen. We stand. Wow, this one's way better. Wow, 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 great, great, great. Guess what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna pretend that they're the same. And through sheer force of will, they will be the same. I'm just gonna throw on some lashes and I'll be right back. Oh my God. <laughs> I just threw on some random lashes and I used my um, Kush mascara from Milk Makeup and I actually invested in a new eyelash curler. I was always using this like four year old Revlon thing that did absolutely nothing. And then I switched to this Laura Mercier one. I know it might seem like a lash curler will not make a difference, but holy crap, the difference is night and day. This Laura Mercier curler, I would not replace with anything in the world right now, so keep that in mind. You know what I mean? <laughs> not sure what I want to do for lips. I'm thinking I might do, I mean, I'm always doing nude. I love nude. Nude, neutral, whatever. Just not like, I don't normally do a lot of color. I'm going to use what's left. I'm going to scrape the barrel, literally scrape the barrel <laughs> of this Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm in Fussy. I have used this into oblivion. I think this is the only lip color I brought with me on the road trip I went on. I know when I got back from that, I was still like delirious from hunger and from maxing out all my credit cards, but maybe one day I'll do a video telling you about like what really happened. <laughs> huh. Anyway, I think we're finished. Ooh, let me do one last thing. She has a trick up her sleeve. Glowy. Anyway, it has been so nice to record this again. I'm really glad that I came back and I re-recorded this by myself. I, Like I said earlier in the video, I tried recording um, some videos in bulk with a producer, and the producer's great. He's super talented. He's a great guy. He's amazing. But I really feel like I need to record by myself on my equipment. Even if the camera isn't the best quality and none of the other YouTubers right now are using it, I don't care. What I care about is feeling comfortable talking to you guys in a way that feels sustainable and in a way that feels healthy and fun to me. So I'm really glad I did this. Um, I'm really happy to be back. I cannot promise anything, but my plan right now is to upload twice a week. Right now, I'm not gonna give you a set schedule. Keep in mind, if you're watching this way after it's posted, there might be a schedule by now, but for now, I think it's safe to expect two videos a week from me. So I will see you again very soon. I love you. 
Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again later. Just remember, what did I say earlier? I repeat like eight times. Um, makeup is cosmetics and beauty is the rest. That's right. Okay, bye.